Because it rained, because they're out and they're easily accessible, I'm going to do an update on the mounts that you see before you. Just a quick question though, can you guess how many there are? Can you count them all? When the intro starts, why don't you put the total number into the comments? I'll give you a moment. Meanwhile, thank you so much for being here. In no particular order, just the left to right order. This is my Dendrobium Saraula. We'll start with her. And I just misted her with a little bit of garlic alcohol because after the separation from the Aphilum mount, she has struggled the worst. I did get some side shoots growing, but you can see the tips have browned off. Now, that could either be stress because of the separation and she lost a big chunk of her existing root system, or it could be other things that have been afflicting my dendrobiums. It could be a bit of thrips attack because weak orchid. She's trying again and I've got more little shoots coming along the canes. Whether they'll make it or not is a different story. So this orchid is majorly set back, but I'm not concerned. There's enough of her to hopefully wake up and be her glorious, beautiful, blooming self in 2024 again. She is not supposed to be deciduous to this degree. So yes, we have some major setback. And to be honest, I am quite surprised by that. Of the two, the other one we're going to see just now, I thought she would be the big bouncer backer. I was wrong. Next to her, we can scooch her along a little bit. And that is Dendrobium unicum. Doing well, no complaints. Also had a little bit of affliction of something. Got some spotting here, which I'm not too comfortable with. So the occasional misting has been a routine. I only got one growth again this year, but it's a good growth. No complaints. We're gonna reach approximately the size of the previous growth and I'm seeing little black spots. It could be thrips, it could just be dust because it rained early this morning. That's why they're all spread out here to get some goodness from mother nature. I'm not concerned that it is thrips. I'm just seeing little white speckles. It's not thrips symptoms, but we'll hopefully keep it that way. So maybe one day my unicum will grace us with two new growths. The greedy orchid grower that I am, I'm hopeful. I'm tucked away in the foliage here, incognito, <laughs> doing the camouflage, is my rhodosticta, well, my Arengus luteo alba variety rhodosticta, very, very poorly. Like, <clears throat> poorly, poorly. <sighs> I think she's a goner. Also given to me by Anonymous. And this is Thrips. I don't know what much more to say about that. <clears throat> but yeah. <sighs> Fingers crossed. But yeah. Now for the next one, we're going to have to step back a bit. And yeah. This is not the video to make any clarifications. But I might as well point it out while I'm at it. This is what I call my zombie rhizome that went on an inorganic mount with little to nothing left but a green rhizome and it popped out four little growths and started to recover. It was quite the miracle, I have to tell you. And since then, it's gotten bigger and bigger structures, okay? Now, <laughs> very big structures. Look at that. Look at that. I think we've got a flower spike in there. And look at that. In my judgment, according to the label, this is a Lelia perinii. Well, I'm going to have to correct that. I believe that this is my, I thought, long lost Brassavola flagellaris. She has much longer leaves than what I thought was Brassavola flagellaris, which is on a mount that is far too big and heavy for me to move. Didn't get the rain, but you see that flagellaris is my perinii. I am super convinced by it because to have an orchid bounce back from a rhizome only with four new growths and then continue on with two more growths and then come out 
with three growths that are just long, also known as the whip orchid. That is not because of exceptional growing, which I would love to claim and own, but that is because I do believe this is my flagellaris. So all my care collab videos about the flagellaris, I showcase the perinii. The only difference being that the perinii has to come inside when the temperatures drop to 15 degrees at night, but the flagellaris doesn't. <laughs> so what a bummer. I have this huge heavy mount <laughs> that I have to bring inside and then this manageable mount can stay outside. I wish it were in the reverse, but hooray, I've got my flagellaris. I didn't think I would see her again. Happy days. And the beauty of this whole thing is is also the roots are starting to find the mount. Next to her is my pulcra, Phalaenopsis pulcra, also Dr. Shibago, that now looks a little bit like, oop, it's got a raised eyebrow because of the algae developing here. Fantastic developments. The root growth has been insane. The keiki has pretty much exploded. I feel I could separate the keiki, put it on its own mount, etc. I'm going to leave it for the winter. So far, I believe I can lay this orchid down somewhere in the indoor grow space and we'll be fine and then see what happens next year. Meanwhile, the roots have not attached to anything from the keiki. They're only just touching the mount. It would be a good time to take it off now. It's too late in the season. I don't want to mess with it. This was the first season in the two years that I've owned this orchid that it actually got its own mount. Instead of languishing in a pot because of its roots going everywhere, I didn't know what to do with it. But what is very interesting is from her previous appearance, she was drooping down. And now all this new growth here is curling up because of where the light was where she lives for the time being. I was hoping not to have to worry about the crown of this orchid when it came to misting, but it's still warm enough. Even though it got rained on, it's fine. There's nothing wrong with the crown, but you can see how the orchid is correcting herself and growing upwards towards the light. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, in the winter, I'm not concerned about watering because she'll be lying down. The mount will be lying down and I'm just going to be able to pour water over the top here and she'll be absolutely fine. Super interesting. Maybe we'll see some blooms from her because her root growth has just gone bonkers. So that is such a pleasure to see an orchid going nuts when it comes to roots. Next to her is my Hawaiara Lava Burst on a scrubby pad for your pots and pans, doing really well. And I mean really, really well. I won't be taking the bigger orchids off. Let me see if I can get her off because she grew two new growths for us this season and the roots are doing well, going nicely in. And now she's starting on another new growth. We'll see how that develops. But I'm really happy because I almost lost this orchid. And uh, yeah, thanks to this very cheap, effective mount, we still have lava burst and she's cooking with gas. I think it's marvelous. If I can get her to focus. There we go. Awesome. Okie dokie. Let me put her back and we'll move to my Podangus Dactyloceras. Also got rained on despite the fact that her crown is parallel to the water source. But she's doing great on the mount. Soon will come the time where I can take one of these little hob filter materials off. She is growing a beautiful new root that's sticking out over there. I'm waiting for it to get a little longer so I can tuck it into one of the creases that you see up there, kind of move it up in there. But she's also branching on the roots over here. And in the one crease that we discovered when I mounted her, the roots are growing in and down and into that little canyon there. She bloomed beautifully. And this year, because of the fact I could keep her hydrated, the blooms lasted two months. Yes, the glassy little cute blooms. We had a bloom duration of two months. Incredible. Whether that had something to do with the fact that I had much higher humidity throughout the months that she was blooming, I didn't have the hot dry winds, maybe three days, but it didn't phase this orchid at all, or 
because I got more water into the structure. I don't know, a combination of the two. Still, it was glorious. So I'm really happy that she is mounted. Yeah, again, the winter, it's all going to be a bit cumbersome, but I'm trying to make my setups conducive for the eight months of the year where the orchid is at her happiest when it comes to temperatures and light. Four months, I'm going to have to dig deep and hopefully just bring them out over to the next season. I love this orchid growing a new leaf as well. Love it. She comes from Kenya and so do I. Here is Dendrobium serrata labium, the other one that was savagely sawn off her mount with the aphyllum, including the one that we just saw, the seraula. And this was the one I thought was going to have the bigger problems to bounce back. I was proven wrong and I am glad I was proven wrong because as long as one of the two shows me that it wasn't so bad to be that radical with also sawing off an existing root system and only leaving maybe 40% of it intact. Well, she didn't bloom for us this summer. And mind you, if she had tried, I would have nipped all the buds off anyway, because uh, uh no way, Jose, not after that intervention. Same with my Saraula. I took all the blooms off once I had them documented because I was not going to have her stress out and do her bloom after bloom after bloom stunt, which is gorgeous, but not after what she has been through. But look, this beautiful new growth at the base, super important because that means a new root system is already developing and growing into the new mount there's a big gap behind the old piece and the new mount and I can see roots in there it's wonderful and just because I took her off where she normally is I am now seeing a second branching shoot which is looking nice and healthy and yes I do miss this one as well on occasions just to keep her protected from any kind of pests that might think oops another weak orchid let's go for it what am I seeing over here there's a bump, maybe she's trying to bloom. If she tries to bloom, I'm gonna just observe and see how she copes because I don't want to ruin her momentum of recovery now as we're moving into colder temperatures. I've got about two months to go before it gets nasty enough for me, but this orchid lives outside all year round. Still, don't wanna weaken her right now. Oh, she's trying. Look what I just saw. Okay, she's trying. We are gonna cross that bridge when we get there. I'm glad that she's got the new growth. I'm glad that she's got new roots already doing their own thing, but I doubt she's strong enough to bloom. That will prompt me to ask you to subscribe if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, so we can follow the recovery of these orchids that were brutally taken off a mount. And it would be awesome to have you on the channel as well, and also ask any questions that you would like about these orchids and their history. It's been a game changer for me this year, putting my inorganic mounts onto the cork bark, and it might all look very, very strange, but it is effective. So here is my exile. But if you have any questions about what is going on here, because it does look unconventional, please add to the guess of your number about how many mounts are in this update. And I can explain in a little more detail what's going on, as well as give you some links to some videos or my evolution of inorganic mounts playlist. And you can see the whole history of what's been going on as the orchids progressed and started to get bigger on those inorganic mounts. And now it was just time to cover the bases for their future because check out Exile. Exile is un monstruo. Exile goes, the light's gonna change, but you see that pokey thing up there? That is Exile. Exile has also started on three new growths, apart from the two growths that were in action at the beginning of the season. They were only this little, like this size right here. And now she's on one, two, three, adding to what is going on. Also, she is branching in so many places. I'm looking forward to seeing some blooms very, very soon, because I can see teeny tiny little buds forming. I know it'll be difficult to see, but they're there because her blooms aren't very big. So you see, I'm here with my garlic alcohol because this shouldn't be happening. I don't like the yellowing of these leaves. They've already been misted this morning after the rain. It could be just the leaves are old, or it could also be that she has a bit of a thrips issue, which, like I said, has been a problem with some of my dens this season. But she was already misted. I don't want to go overboard. 
Anyway, a couple of leaves lost is not an issue. What you can see with this orchid right here is that <laughs> I'm glad I didn't tidy her up back in the day because I got to know her more and more. You would think that this cane was just a little bit of a stick and I could have tidied her up and cut it off. Well, behold, three branches. Aesthetics is always a wonderful thing, but sometimes we can deny ourselves the pleasure of getting to know an orchid if we intervene too soon, which I probably did when I cut this bit off because look, the pseudobulb is still fine. This one was okay to cut off because the pseudobulb had declined. But check that out. I denied us more branching options. Same with down here. Look at that. Just sticks, you would think. And actually this one, this little one here is growing roots. <laughs> Gorgeous orchid. It's not a statement piece, but she is wild. I love that. I hope you can see that against the light and against all the distractions of the foliage and the fence in the background. Moving on swiftly to my Tolumnia hoxonia, which I got from Anonymous. Still on its original inorganic mount, hopfertile material, doing fabulously as well. Bloomed with two spikes this season and now is growing roots into the material and lots of little branchings coming out. I won't get the same length of branching of the new growth that she would produce in the wild. For that, my climate isn't humid enough, and I say that even though this season was fantastic, but I'm not greedy like that as long as she stays alive and grows well, and really, I cannot complain. I wish I would have mounted her even lower on the mount, but c'est la vie. Anywho, I think I've got about four new little branchings coming out. I just have to be careful that they don't catch in the hob filter material while also guiding roots in. Fun stuff, even though it looks really unconventional. <laughs> oh my, oh my, oh my. <clears throat> Clears throat because amazed. Dendrobium bensoniae on the left, Dendrobium polyanthum on the right. These two actually are neighbors under the portico of the blooming alley, but hey, when it rains, bring it on, out they come. I have had issues, you can see here's the similar spotting that I've got with my unicum. I had some pest issues. Now, these are deciduous, so I'm not too bothered as long as they continue to grow healthily and not lose their growing points. That's all I'm concerned about. But it's a very strange year as to why this spotting appeared and I couldn't actually tell what the pest was. Again, this is not thrips. Thrips looks totally different, but you can see how beautiful all these canes have grown so far. They're still in active growth. This orchid was also given her own mount and the roots have absolutely enjoyed finding that cork bark. It is beautiful to watch this happen. This orchid amazes me year in, year out. Got seven new canes growing and maybe some will be a tad longer than previous years. Yeah, that's already a terminal leaf here. Maybe I'm asking too much. Still got active growth down here. Oh, it's going to be a beautiful show in 2024 with the blooms of this orchid and my polyanthem here to the right. Also, well, we had some rot issues on some canes that I'm propagating to get some cakeys out of them. But the rot issues, I believe, is not to do with the setup. I firmly believe that this orchid, that's how it propagates itself. It deteriorates the canes at the base so that they fall off, land somewhere, and then create new plants. Because there's so much air around all this orchid, even with that moss little pocket that I've got in the back here, I do believe that this orchid definitely is an automatic propagator because some of the canes, <laughs> this is funny, I wonder if I can get you in, hold on a minute, let me see if I can show you this. So you see this cane right here, it is not even close to the base of the orchid, close to the mount, it is a cakey in its own right, and it just deteriorated at the base and grew a little cakey of its own. <laughs> which has a little tiny blue. So you see, this is so beautifully aerated, lots of airflow, there's nothing wrong, it's not like it's rotting at the base, and for that reason it's going to decline. I believe this is just a normal growth habit of this orchid. It was just that this year is the first time I discovered that phenomenon, and I was thinking, oh no, my orchid is not getting enough airflow, but yep, I think that's just what she does. Anyway, 
she has really progressed beautifully on her new snazzy mount can't complain about the growths. I think I've got about 11 original growths from the base of the orchid and then eventually some cakeys as well. I don't go digging around in there because the canes are so much more, let's say fleshy, succulent like that they can snap very easily at that stage. Let's just say <laughs> I'm not rummaging around in that. She looks wonderful and I had a little bit of an issue here with another little pest probably the start of maybe a spider mite but she is also protected by garlic alcohol and it hasn't progressed so talking about <laughs> not snapping canes let me take you to my victoria regina yes she is on the right i know i'm not now i'm going to go from right to left but my victoria regina you can see the spotting here very familiar spotting yeah nasty don't like so this one was also now protected with garlic alcohol, but I do believe just a little bit late because then I came against her with my sprayer while I'm misting her. And as the canes are getting longer and longer, I strongly believe that me bumping into the growth point right here that was already somewhat weakened by the pest that's leaving these spots. Weird. Anyway, that growth point was weakened and then I come with the back end of my spray and I bumped it. So unfortunately, this is the length of the cane. Yeah, while that's frustrating, I'm not, uh, not too, you know, I'm not gonna beat myself up over it too much because it was close to being finished growing as well because all the other ones that are in the same growth period when this started off at the base, when these three, they finished their growth and we didn't have that much longer to go, but still, you know, you kick yourself when you make a mistake like that. One thing is to eliminate the pests and then you go and perpetuate a problem with a problem. Very bad idea, something that we golfers should never ever do. When you make a bad shot, you don't want to follow it up with another bad shot. <laughs> well, that's what I did pretty much here. I don't know if that analogy made sense. Doing great though. Best year ever, of course, high humidity. It wasn't that hot this season. And I think I'm going to need to maybe consider doing something about the mount for next year. I don't want to take her off the old mount, but yeah, this has now been five years with that mount. So I'm gonna have to probably do some shaving off a piece of cork and then flatten that surface out to get this orchid on some fresh cork. You can see I've got a new growth starting right down in there, which we will be following the progress of if you are interested for the next three years, because this one up here, yeah, that is three years and I'm about to reach the limit of my tripod. That's three years, it's still growing, Benaki. And then this one started earlier this season and it's still growing, so it's a good thing. She had the best blooming that she's ever had in my collection. I had three flushes this year and just, Gorgeous, 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 cannot complain. Got some leaves going yellow, but that's, oh, and something new happened this year as well. Thank you so much still for being here. I know videos like these make me ramble. <laughs> anyway, thank you if you're still here. First thing that has ever happened on this orchid is she's branching on one of the canes. Can you see that? Da, 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 da. I don't want to jiggle the tripod, don't want to break my canes. Look at that. That has not happened on any of her other canes. So this cane has stopped growing. I've got a branch that is in active growth. Maybe, hopefully, we can ask for a pardon, get some grace. And the growing point that I destroyed here, maybe this cane will eventually branch for us as well. That would be awesome. Let me fish out my little twinkle here. Major rescue effort. There's a whole history of all the rescue attempts about this orchid and at the end of the day I popped her onto a mount because after having three twinkles I was left with two pseudobulbs and a new growth and I thought this, yeah, I might as well toss her if I don't put her on a mount. So here we are. <laughs> little one actually has a pseudobulb now. That's fantastic. Look at all these little roots coming. That's very promising. And this little growth, while it never formed a pseudobulb, it is now starting another new growth and it also at least produced some roots. Hang on, is that a teeny tiny little pseudobulb? 
<laughs> but anyway, you can see that there is progress here as well. I'm not, uh, I don't know how to, you know, I'm happy that she's doing better, but taking a twinkle off a mount and then my hot, dry climate, um, yeah, maybe, maybe my climate has changed now to a statistic of 70% humidity throughout the entire year. I think that 2023 was a little bit of a freak year in that sense. But hey, if the climate is changing and giving me more humidity now consistently for next year as well, then things will also change with the setup of my orchids. There has to be less water retentive media to buffer against the dry air because a result of this glorious, glorious humidity that I have had this year is I've lost a lot of small orchids because they were in the setup to counteract the dry climate that I'm so used to. And then if you have 70% and up for three months straight, even though airflow, but the airflow is heavy with water. Yeah, highly water retentive media and high humidity. <laughs> they're not a good match. But anyway, I shall not mourn my losses this year anymore. I'm just glad that what I've showed you today is showing progress minus my Minus, well, it's kind of showing progress, my Saraula, but mm, a bit dodgy. She's not gone, though. She's definitely not gone. I'm sure that come springtime, she's going to realize what we did was the right thing because she was being <laughs> flowered out, drowned out, grown out of that fill amount. She stood no chance. If you've made it this far, I want you to know that I appreciate your support very, very much. I would also appreciate it if you would like this video. It really helps the channel with the algorithm. And the only thing left for me to say, apart from thank you for watching, is I do wish you a wonderful day on that one condition, though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.